this whole Petraeus thing is really suspicious. Yeah, it is. And I've always mentioned, and I've always said this before on this show, if you are a hardcore listener to the show, uh, you'll see that I've said many times before that if you have surrogates working for you, you want to put them in the uh, chairman or the head position of your agency or whatever department that you are trying to hijack. And you put somebody in there like David Petraeus, who's going to do your bidding. And what you do is you basically uh, blackmail them. I mean, that's how you get away with it. You blackmail them and you say, look, if you speak out or if you don't do what we tell you to do, uh, we are going to tell the people or we're going to show pictures to your wife about you having sex with this guy or having an affair with this other woman or whatever like that. And it happens all the time. So to me, what this signifies is that there's a lot of shenanigans going on in the CIA. And I've always said this. There are people in the CIA, Mormons in the CIA, who are trying to hijack it. What Webster Tarpley calls a... Oh, you should read his book. It's called Too Weird. Just Too Weird. Bishop Romney and the Mormon Takeover. I bought the book. I read it uh, a weekend before the election. And I'm counting my blessings that this fucker... Fuck twat, Mitt Romney didn't win the election. Well, I'm very, very happy with that. But I'm not very happy with Obama. So that's really the other uh, side of my issue. But I read the book and uh, you should read it. I recommend it. And I think you can find it at Progressive Books. It's one of the best books I have read so far this year. And it confirmed all of my <laughs> speculation about the Mormon church and Romney himself. You know, dating back to his family, uh, his grandfather in the Chihuahua, Mexico, when he had that polygamous colony. Oh, yeah. What about that? But the Mormons are also, uh, Webster Tarpley is also correct on this, and I'm also trying to figure this out, is that, yes, there is a, there's a Mormon clique, if you want to call it. He calls it a mafia. I call it a clique. You know, the boys... They get together in high school. They're the ones that pull all the pranks in high school. Well, it's sort of like this. The high school being the CIA. And what happened in, Beng in Benghazi is really, I think for me, clear cut. What happened was these Mormon uh, CIA operatives, uh, they pretty much didn't want Obama to win. They wanted their man. They wanted their buddy to win the presidency in the White House, uh, Mitt Romney. So in order to categorize Obama, they're going to have to have some sort of October surprise. And they're trying to make this Benghazi incident an October surprise. But it didn't work. It backfired. And it made Romney made, you know, look stupid. And the uh, second uh, second debate, I think it was, yeah, in the second debate, when uh, Romney tried to say that Obama didn't say it was a terrorist act, something like that. So he, they were fighting over stupid uh, details, but nonetheless, Romney was made to look stupid. So now, heads are starting to roll, right? That's what's going on. And I think it went up to Hillary Clinton. I think they said, hey, Hillary, uh, you're going to be fired too because uh, you didn't do anything about this. And they're trying to, you know, finger point, say who was behind the Benghazi attack because uh, to me, it was a clear planned attack. Nothing else. The ambassador, who is supposedly gay, by the way, the ambassador is assassinated in a clear plan attack he was supposed to be in a safe house that nobody else knew but the cia knew somehow they ended up there a mercenary uh assassination coup a death squad 
You know, they came in and they assassinated everybody there. They came after the guy and they got him and they killed the ambassador. They knew where he was exactly. And at what time he was supposed to be there. Can you smell something suspicious? I do. Look, I'm not I'm not a, a sponge here. I'm not some dummy that can say, oh well, you know, ABC or CBS, you know, they say that the, you know it was protesters who were protesting that that Islamophobic movie, whatever. Like, yeah, like that's gonna really do it. No. It wasn't that. Although we can point at, you know, that, well, look, the movie was relevant, okay? But it wasn't what really killed this ambassador. This ambassador was very popular in Libya. Yeah, he was. He was very popular with the uh, Muslim Brotherhood as well. I don't know what, I don't know what was the, you know, if, if you're going to say it was the Muslims, some wacky Muslims did it, then you're going to have to really prove to me why they did it. And, you know, we, we're never going to find out why they did it if that is the theory that you're going to propose my theory is very simple is that somebody within the cia pretty much knew what to do and they did it and if you want to trace exactly who was behind the attack there are various suspects that i find i you know in my research uh, but, and some of them, actually one of them was, at, uh, was a prisoner at Gitmo. <laughs> That's why Gitmo is not really a detention center anymore. It's a training ground for the CIA. That's what it is. So they train this, some of these guys, and then, you know, they do their bidding for the CIA. What happened was, they knew about Petraeus. They knew they had an affair. They have evidence for it. They, you know, that's what happened. And Obama did not, I mean, Obama won the election. Romney lost. So they are really, this is vengeance. This is what's going, what's really happening is that the, that the Mormon clique within the CIA, they got pissed. They are uh, throwing a tantrum and uh, they didn't get their men in. So heads are going to start rolling. And one of them is Petraeus. Because Petraeus didn't really do a good job to blame it on Obama as much. And that's what I think. So they couldn't really categorize this as much. They couldn't use it. And they tried to use it, right, uh, towards the end of the election, uh, towards the uh, towards election day. They were trying to use this Benghazi affair again. But what re it really is is a Petraeus affair. I mean, that's what it is. It The buck stuffed with, with Petraeus because, and that's him complex, and this was proven already. Uh, and that's him complex where the ambassador was assassinated. They had a, probably between a dozen or so, um, CIA uh, soldiers who were there to protect the ambassador, protect the embassy and, and the consulate what happened was that they were there and somehow they were ordered to stand down what happened that should be investigated who ordered them to stand down was it petraeus or was it some was it somebody within the cia was it a, a deputy director was it one of the mormon clique members or uh, yeah it could have been them because it makes better sense you, uh, you have this situation going on under Obama, and you categorize Obama, and you have Romney winning the presidency. And like a script by the book, as predicted by various people like me, uh, the Romney campaign tried to use the Benghazi affair, the assassination of the U.S. ambassador. Now, to give Obama props, I'm not really an Obama fan but I will say this, Obama, uh, he tried to do a good job on this. But the thing is, is that the president is not supposed to manage every fucking embassy and consulate around the world. There's a special department for that. I forgot what it was called, but it's under the State Department. And the CIA is responsible as well for the security of these various consulates and embassies. What happened there? 
Well, Obama needs to use his balls, and I don't know. Maybe it was Obama that got the information of the uh, Petraeus affair with this other woman, and maybe he called up Petraeus and said, "Hey, Petraeus, get the fuck out! I don't want you guys here anymore." And Petraeus said, "No, I'm I'm, I'm not going to leave, Mr. President." And uh, and so uh, he said, okay, so if, if you're not going to resign, I'm going to, I'm going to pass these photos out about, you know, with you and these other girls or whatever. So he then had to resign. And conservatives are saying, no, oh, well, this is, this is a coincidence. Obama is trying to protect Petraeus. I don't know about that because then we have this article here. Okay. Uh, this is from ABC. And it says, the FBI, the FBI withheld its findings about General David Petraeus' affair from the White House and congressional leaders because the agency considered them the result of a criminal investigation that never reached the threshold of an intelligence probe, law enforcement sources said today. So they knew about Petraeus for a long time already. And guess what? They blackmailed him. That's what happened. That's how they got away with all their shenanigans and Benghazi. I bet if Petraeus wasn't blackmailed or he wasn't into this, uh, we wouldn't have had that disastrous, uh, uh, you know, that incident in Benghazi in Libya. The sources said agents follow department guidelines that generally bar sharing information about developing criminal investigations. The FBI is also aware of its history under former director J. Edgar Hoover of playing politics and digging into the lives of public figures. Oh, that's still going on right now. The people that they put in power in many of these agencies and uh, sub-agencies and uh, departments, uh, they're all blackmailed. Uh, not all of them, but some, most of them are blackmailed in some way. So you fall out of line... You don't do what you're being told. You're going to be forced to resign. In a very humiliating way. As one official said, the rules are designed to protect people, both private and elected officials, when negative information about them arises in the course of a criminal investigation that is not a crime. The FBI's focus was on whether laws were broken, in this case, whether federal cyber harassment statutes were violated. Oh, come on, please. That wasn't it. That wasn't why they probe it. <laughs> they knew some. They were onto something. They knew it. They blackmailed Petraeus, and that's what happened. The sources emphasized that Petraeus himself was never the focus of the investigation, nor did it turn up evidence he broke any law. Of course. So why would they even go there? Because they had to. Because they wanted Petraeus in their pocket. The focus was on his biographer, Paula Broadwell, with whom he had the affair that ended with his resignation as CIA director last week. Officials said it took time to trace the harassing emails that she allegedly sent to another woman back to her. Because Petraeus' name was involved, criminal investigators kept an open eye for potential national security violations. They had to investigate Broadwell's background but found no evidence she was a spy. But House Majority Leader Eric Cantor knew of Petraeus' affair with Broadwell uh, almost two weeks before the former CIA director resigned his post. There you go. A lot of people knew not just two weeks before, but way before. The, the uh, degeneracy of our democracy in front of our eyes.